we eat inflammatory, horrible food, then we are going to be inflammatory, horrible human beings. We're going to be more stressed out. We're going to have more brain fog. We're going to have more internal infections. We're going to have more yeast, more candida, more bacterial overgrowth, and more misery in our life. And if we want to have the best chance possible, we could do all those things that I mentioned, all those immune supporters, we can meditate, we can get massages, etc. But if we still keep eating a toxic diet, we will always be a toxic person. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Doc Jock Show. Today, my goal is to get canceled. And I say that because what I'm going to be talking about is going to be incredibly controversial. Well, if you follow me for long enough, you know you're going to agree with all of this stuff. But I'm starting to get to this point where like this internal turmoil keeps taking over. And this whole thing has been brought about after I wrote out a script of everything I wanted to talk about today. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to let it marinate for a minute. And then... <laughs> I went, woke up this morning and more of the same crap is continuing to happen. And so this whole thing is going to be bringing you from the state of where we were, what we evolved into, where we are again, right? Repeating itself. And what do we need to do for the future? Because this is just getting ridiculous at this point. What am I talking about? You probably already know the covid resurgence, the, the, the supposed COVID resurgence that's coming out and there's new strains coming out of this, that, and the other thing. There's conspiracies that they're going to shut down airlines again, start to force people to wear masks, get vaccinated again to be, do, be able to do all this stuff again. And I want you guys to remember, go back and dig around before they erase all this and censor everything. Go back and watch what the doctors and the nurses that were supposedly too busy saving lives we're, we're taking hours at a time to choreograph a TikTok video to pretend that they, they were saving lives, that they're so overwhelmed, but yet you're posting on social media, trying to get a social following in your nursing outfit, your doctor outfit, doing who, who knows what actually physically there. There were layoffs. There wasn't, a, they said all the hospitals were filled. That's a bunch of bullshit. They lied to you then. They're lying to you again now. And now it's like Bobby Sausalito, I believe his last name is Sausalito. Bobby was talking about how fool me once, shame on you. Fool me once, or fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I think that's how it goes. Either way, I'm all fired up on this, so I'm trying to do my best through it. So they're going to try to push the same shit again. They're going to try to push the same agenda again. The bottom line is the COVID shot did not work. COVID did not kill the way that it was supposed to kill. And I'm saying this and not being insensitive to people who supposedly died from COVID, but I would ask you to, to forcefully examine now that we've had a couple of years that have passed and supposedly millions of people have died. Look at the actual statistics. Look at the actual literature. More people are dying from the COVID jab than actually COVID itself. People were dying and tagged with COVID cause of death when it was actually not even a part of the comorbidities or, or di differential diagnosis. It was just did they test positive for COVID or do we just put COVID on there and then they would put people on a ventilator and they would die? What we need to know is we need to go back even before COVID. Go back to this, this study that was done. It's called Death by Medicine. And it was done back in, I believe, 2016. This study was published. All right. And it was talking about number one, number two, cause of death, heart disease, cancer. Number three, cause of death was medical errors. Medical, oopsies, did the wrong thing, did the wrong procedure, gave the wrong drug. I have had patients that I have helped overcome cancer and life-threatening diseases through natural means. And I've had two, uh, there's some that I'll, I'll call out. One ended up dying because they had cellulitis that developed on the leg and they went to the urgent care. They're trying to get stem cells and stuff after this accident had occurred, but they gave her the wrong medication. She had a very rare liver disorder, gave her medication that specifically says, do not give to anybody with liver complications. They gave it to her and she died soon after. And family, I know if you're listening to this, you know that I will never forget that patient. She is, was just freaking amazing. She was like the, the most aggressive amazing, hilarious spitfire that has ever stepped foot in my practice. And I miss her every single day, just like I'm sure your family does too. There's another one who got me into 
the Amish population in when I was in Pittsburgh and these guys were out in Ohio and the, the family is so unbelievably amazing. He came to me with prostate cancer. We helped him. He overcame it. He was doing fantastic. He fell, broke a hip. They put him in hospice, gave him the wrong freaking medications again. He swelled up and died from medical errors. Okay. These are just a couple of case studies that I have with my you know, I don't have a ridiculously large practice, but I have experience with, with medical doctors fucking up. And it's getting really, really, really frustrating. And I'm hoping that what's happening is when, when our parents and our grandparents, when they had doctors back in the day, they had doctors that truly cared about their health and well-being. They had doctors that believed in a less is more mentality. Or even still, like they're they're mixing cocaine and certain things, but cocaine, right, from the cocoa leaf is actually, it's an organic compound. Now, it can absolutely be used and abused. I'm not telling you to use cocaine, but they were using more natural means until that greedy ass Rockefeller came in here and started taking everything from Eastern civilization, traditional Chinese herbs, herbologists, et cetera, and basically destroyed it and turned it into the pharmaceutical industry that we know today. And Rockefeller founded these, these medicinal colleges and, and this brainwashing that took place is why him, Rothschild, Carnegie are some of the most powerful, most richest families out there is because they smashed everybody down to make more money for themselves, right? So if we look back and if we think about this, and I'm, I'm going to draw more and more information, this isn't actually even on my notes here. I'm just going with it here. I'm just opening my mouth and God's just flowing through me. So I'm going to talk a million miles an hour. You may have to see if podcast, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you're listening to me, YouTube, if you can go like half speed to slow me down, it's probably going to be the only way you're going to be able to follow along and understand and what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually do my best here because, you know, parents, if you're, if you're in a car and you're listening with kids, I, I'm trying my best not to swear. I just get really passionate. I just get fired up, I'm rolling up my sleeves right now because I'm just, I'm, I'm in it right now. So I apologize ahead of time. If I do swear, it's going to be the least of, least of your worries and concerns when you're hearing this information. But if we think about it and we ask ourselves a very simple question, has medicine ever had our best interest in mind? Simple question, simple answer, no. Why do I say that? And why do I boldly say that? Because medicine doesn't make you healthy. Medicine erases symptoms. Okay. Now there are life-threatening diseases and disorders that maybe you might need an antibiotic for. And that's what antibiotics were originally intended for is like aggressive use in terms of like, if there is an aggressive infection, it's about to kill you, about to eat your flesh, take an antibiotic, hope that it kills it, and you should be good. Even though herbals like oil of oregano, berberine, silver, some of these other things that are more like natural can do the same thing. Antibiotics are designed to kill like MRSA. Okay, like an example, I've had MRSA. I had MRSA like three times going through uh, college. It's not fun. I remember digging out the infection from my arm, from my tricep. So I had like a bullet hole look like on the back of my arm. Now I have a tattoo that kind of covers it so you can't see it. But I remember that. And I took antibiotics for it. And those antibiotics destroyed my body. It made certain side effects. And the guy joked with me when he gave me this, this antibiotic. He goes, go ahead, try this out. So I tried it. I've told my wife about this. But Certain things on my body became inflamed and swelled. Certain things that in an egoic sense, you're like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Oh, that must be nice. No, it hurt. It stretched every ounce of tissue in that area due to that antibiotic. I went back to the doc and he goes, oh, yeah, I thought that was going to happen. Let's give you something else. I'm like, you jack wagon? Like, come on. So we have the question, right? Does medicine ever have our best interest in mind? The answer is no. And this was back then we had doctors who cared more. Now it's, it's these family members that like when, you know, immigrants move from different countries and come to the United States, right? There's a lot of pressure and the family members want a better life, right? So they're like, you need to go to medical school, right? So it's not even the kid's choice anymore. It's the parent's choice. The parents are trying to tell them to go to medical school so they can make a difference in this world. But these kids go to school just to make their parents proud. They hate school. They hate what they're doing. And all they're doing is plugging and chugging. And I have a very staunch philosophy, but I believe anybody, anybody without any schooling at all can be a medical doctor. I strongly feel that way. Why? 
when you go to your medical doctor's office and they're taking notes and they're and they're just putting a couple dots in there, what do you think they're doing? They're putting your symptoms into a little catalog, right? Saying, okay, we have these symptoms here. Here is your diagnosis, right? You have this diagnosis. There are these medications that go with that diagnosis, right? It's so easy. It's so easy. And medical doctors don't care if you're taking a medication that interacts or have, has negative drug interactions with another medication that you're taking. And if you disagree with me, you're not really paying attention or you haven't been put on enough medications to understand that. I've had patients with 16 plus medications coming into my office. I've had patients with that all have drug interaction checkers. You put them in drug interaction or drugs.com drug interaction checker says, don't take with this. Don't take with this. This is too many. Don't take with this. You should only have this many. And you go down this list and you're like, what the hell? And then there's pharmacists that are calling these doctors like, dude, if I fill this script, your patient can die. And the doctor's like, oh, oh, my bad. Uh, what would you recommend? Right? These are all real stories that I hear. This isn't made up conspiracy stuff. Right? So we take, we take the joy and the love and the compassion away from medical doctors, but that philosophy that medical doctors save lives is still currently present. And I don't understand it. I don't. Every time you go for a wellness checkup, whether it's for your kids or for you, if you leave with drugs or surgery, you are sicker. You don't believe me? Right? Oh, I don't have symptoms. I had high blood pressure. Now I have blood pressure medication. My symptoms are great. Good. Enjoy your chronic fatigue. Right? Enjoy your stress. Enjoy your burnout. Enjoy not finding the root cause of why your blood pressure was high to begin with. You spray over that check engine light and say your blood pressure was high because you have a stomach infection. Right? A nasty stomach infection, but your blood, your blood pressure is okay. Right? Everything that happens and occurs in the body is designed to help us. It's designed to inform us. There are messages to us to let us know that there is some sort of dysfunction within the body. If we ignore those signs of dysfunction, if we ignore those symptoms, or we take a medication, or we take an herb, or we just take, we just take a supplement, right? Let's back it off. Let's just say we take a supplement, right? Turmeric. Because you have, you, they want to do a blood thinner. So you do turmeric instead of, you know, some other warfarin or something like that rat poison that they're going to give you. And like, well, I'm going to do turmeric. Why the hell was your blood thick to begin with? Is it because you've been on high dose steroids, testosterone treatment therapy, and your, your clotting factors are going up. Ribinogen is up. Inflammatory placking is taking place in the body. And like, let's give you a blood thinner. Well, great. If I give you turmeric, it's better than warfarin. But why? was your blood thick to begin with. Your doctor will never tell you that. And in fact, if you ask your doctor to tell you why your body is operating the way that it is, it's gonna be, it's your age, it's your genetics, it's your lack of exercise, it's your culture, it's all of these excuses to take the power away from you. And that's where we are and that's where we're standing right now. They came out in 2019, they released, <laughs> a virus that they were experimenting with. Fauci was experimenting with this crap in Wuhan, China, and the crap got out. And now we're finding out that in California, there's another research lab where they're tinkering with stuff. And guess what? Now we have a new strain of COVID. Well, guess what? Again, God built us to be able to handle everything, right? We have had two, three, four years of undeniable stress. Children, psychologically speaking, are, are in a, a horrible shape. They mask the crap out of our kids, which I don't give a crap if you're like, show me the research. Put a freaking mask on and tell me you can breathe. It's going to decrease oxygen, right? Which is going to increase lactic acid. You're not changing your masks out so your spit has certain bacteria on it. Then the moisture from your breath is going to cause more bacterial growth. And if we did a culture of those masks because you never change them because it's too big of a pain in the butt or you have to have 5,000 of them, right? Or you just hang them in your car to bake the bacteria in your car. Then you put it back on, you're going to have more of a respiratory issue, right? Now we know it's so unbelievably, apparently just God- awfully obvious the COVID jab kills people. 
it's unbelievably obvious. We're having athletes die. We're having Tamar Hamlin supposedly get hit in the exact right spot to make his heart stop on the freaking field. And yet they're still making that young man play this year. I am a firm believer that at some point he's going to get an injury, quote unquote, get an injury, and he's going to be done and he's going to hang it up. But his contract, probably somewhere in the contract, it says you have to play for another couple of games because we can't draw awareness to COVID shot and, and the fact that you dropped on the field, right? You can't, I've played football. I have been hit so many times in so many weird ways, right? And he's a defensive back. Those guys are small hitting line, like linemen. They're getting plowed over by linemen, running backs, these huge freaking mammoth human beings. And you tell me he hit just right in, like perfectly right in the chest. And it, it hit during that phase of his heart rhythm. And, and, and so that's what happened. Bull crap. Not the truth, right? But they've, they've forced this agenda, right? Which is fear. Fear, fear, fear. And that's all the government is wanting to do right now is pump you full of fear. What is fear going to do? Fear is going to eliminate your immune system. It's going to make you lose sleep at night. It's going to make you short, irritable with people, more frustrated, more angry. All of these things are just going to well up inside the body. And all the while, what's going to happen, right? We're projecting everything here. This is what we'll talk about the positives towards the end of this. But what's going to happen, right? Men are going to start being unbelievably upset and unhappy. Why? Because their ability to be able to provide for their family is getting ripped from beneath them. Moms are under attack because moms aren't even allowed to be called moms anymore because they're women and women is an offensive term nowadays. And a man could be a woman and a man can compete in women's sports. And if a woman doesn't agree with that, then you're transphobic, homophobic, white supremacist, MAGA supporter, Trump supporter, whatever, when in reality, we shouldn't be entertaining people with psychological mental imbalances. And that's what these people are. So we have that we have a ruining of the family dynamic. Women can't be women anymore. Women have to be forced into the workplace. Because if you're a stay at home mom, shame on you for being a stay at home mom. Plus, they're pushing inflation up. So the cost of living is going up. We're making less than we had before spending more. So then moms are having to enter into the workforce. And now kids are being subjected to this brainwashing with critical race theory and all these other things being pumped in on school. How much more stress can an American tolerate before we snap, before we fight back? And now they're coming back. Morris Brown College, I believe it was down in Atlanta, Georgia, is now requiring masks again in class. I believe they're also pushing to do mandatory vaccinations again, right? When, if you think about it, medicine is a business. These vaccines are a business. They did a lot. They pushed a lot, but they didn't hit their quota, right? They didn't hit their projections. So now they have this giant surplus of COVID shots. And I don't know much about the shelf life of these, these jabs, but I'm sure they're either running out or they're going to an expiration date. So like, we got to use these things before they expire, Or they're like, hey, we need to do another push because we need to get this put into the standard vaccination agenda. Now, people are becoming more and more awake because they're like, wait, this COVID jab, it's killing people. It's causing all of this harm. It's being pushed on children, moms, pregnant moms, right? And all of this chaos is happening. But what's really hilarious to me, and I talk with my wife, Megan, about this all the time. I talk with these doc psych coaches and even some of my patients. I'm like, listen, like, at what point? Are we as Americans going to wake up and realize medicine doesn't care? Medical doctors don't care. The government doesn't care, right? We are getting taxed to no end. For my business, I buy a supplement to sell in my practice. I pay tax on that. I sell it to my patient. That patient gets taxed to get that supplement. I get taxed as well on the patient's on the patient's processing there. And then I get taxed if I pay myself. And at the end of the year, I get taxed on that dollar and the business gets taxed on that dollar as well. They are gouging the dollar in taxes. And then they're throwing our money away to a war that I don't believe that we should be a part of. They are coming after us in all directions, right? So when it comes to these COVID shots, we think that, this, that it's just this COVID shot. But in reality... These are the companies with multi-billion dollar and million dollar lawsuits lying, okay? And I think it was Pfizer or something, some, some pharmaceutical company 
paid out for Epstein Island victims. Like there was some weird correlation between these, these pharmaceutical companies and Epstein's Island. We're seeing this corruption. We're seeing this greed, but people still somehow believe that it's just a COVID shot that's bad. But the DTAP, measles, polio, all the flu shot. Oh, those are okay, though. It's the same dang people. The same ones that are pushing the same agenda. When are we going to wake up and realize this has been the game the entire time? They continuously talk about climate change, about carbon emissions. And there's so much research coming out that is just laughable when they say that we overpopulate the earth. I saw a video this morning where they did a, a quantifiable analysis of how much space we take. And then if all of us had a farm, for all of the people on this world, we all lived on the same continent or the same country. I believe it was like we would all fit just in Iran. That's it. That's all the space that we occupy with like a, a 200 square foot or uh, there's it was meters. So it's not, it's not Americanized. So I don't know meters and feet, <laughs> yards, all that. But there, the point of it was we are not overpopulated. We are told that we are overpopulating. We are told that we are a problem. Kamala Harris is talking about depopulation. Bill Gates is talking about depopulation. World Economic Forum, World Health Organization is all designed to kill us. And they say through medical interventions and vaccinations, we will be able to reduce the population. When are we going to wake up? When are we going to say no? We're not doing this anymore. We're not playing your game anymore. We have to stand up. We have to rise up. We have to start taking actions to protect ourselves and to protect our families. Men, man up. Stop being worried ab about being offensive to other people. Stop pandering to other people's emotions because at the end of the day, you could say F you to somebody. You could say it to me. And if I choose to just not give your words any power, then your words fall flat, all right? They have personal choice. If somebody says, you offended me, and I'm like, I just said, hi, or I said, thank you, thank you, ma'am, or I held the door for you and that was offensive for you, that has nothing to do with me. That's everything to do with your perception. Men are being told to be shadows of themselves. Women are stepping into the masculine role, and they're doing a great job at it because women are freaking superheroes, but they're not designed to handle the constant stress. Men are. I just had a call with a patient before I jumped on this podcast. She's working her butt off to do this major, major, major sell of these practices that her and her husband has. She's doing amazing, but her body is breaking down. Her husband, she compared, she's like, my husband's like, oh yeah, it's fine. Like, it's okay. Like we're, we'll, we'll get through it. We'll do it. Right. Women don't understand. It's because men operate from testosterone as the primary sex hormone. Testosterone is an emotional, right? Estrogen, progesterone, but particularly estrogen is more emotional. So women are going to get more wrapped up in it and the stress is going to damage your hormones more so than it would a man. Men have forgetful memories. We're kind of knuckleheads. I think God designed us that way. So we can just basically have that quarterback mentality. Like if we throw an interception, we get right back out the next play, we throw a, a freaking touchdown, right? That's what we are designed to do. And we have to go back to these family dynamics and we have to start protecting our kids. And we have to start operating as a family unit with emotional intelligence and pass that knowledge on to our children, right? And then on to our children's children. So when it comes to what the heck do we do, we have to first understand that this has been the long game. This has been the long play. And all of this stuff that's happening right now, in my opinion, is because they're being sought out. They're being, they're being found out. They can't hide it anymore. They're telling us in broad daylight. Joe Biden is falling asleep in uh, Maui at, a, at a, a, a freaking gather. I'm like starting over my words to try not to swear, but he fell asleep on camera while people were talking about their lives being lost. And then he tried to compare it to lightning hitting his pond in his, in his pond house or lake house that he had. And he almost lost his wife in a 67 Corvette. You're a piece of garbage, Joe. Get the hell out of here. Don't come and visit. And also, why were you, you were late in going to Maui, but why did you also never go to East Palestine or Palestine, however you pronounce that? You never showed up there. 
right? There's so much of this stuff that we have to understand that they're not going to support us anymore. But what they're trying to do is create so much fear that we don't have power anymore. We are disempowered. We are disingenuine. We don't have our family anymore. They want to separate us. They want to separate our kids from us. They want to corrupt our kids at a young age to create these trans, this trans movement where you're mutilating your genitals and doing hormone manipulation, which you'll see five, 10, 15 years from now, another skyrocket increase in cancers because people are are not meant to be put on hormone therapy to create a different version of themselves. I don't care if they identify that as that. That is something where you say, hey, buddy, hey, little Joey, you need to go and talk to a therapist about that and figure out what the hell is going on chemically inside you that makes you feel that way. Because if that was true, you would have been born a different way. You're not trapped inside your body. You're confused. And these TikTokers and these Instagrammers are trying to take advantage of and make so much money on outing their kids and paying for these surgeries to get these, these organs removed. Right. And it's disgusting. It's this mutilation. You're like, where the, where the hell is God? What in the world is going on? But I think this stuff has to be so unbelievably obvious because we have been asleep. We have been asleep for years and for generations we have been asleep. So it takes a sledgehammer of life for you to wake up. It takes a sledgehammer for you to understand no one's going to protect you, but you start a tribe. You want to know what's offensive to the government, get a community, get some land, build a tribe, have good people and have kids live off the land. You want to make them furious. Do that. Get out of the suburbs, go up to the mountains, right? Northern Arizona. That's like, go, go somewhere else. Right. Because if we buy into this, we buy into these 15 minute cities and and I'm huge with like, you know, everyone's saying, oh, get solar power, get solar powered cars, get solar powered homes. These smart cities are going to be solar powered and we're going to have all this stuff. And they want to try to take out our freaking desert in Arizona. Get the hell out of here. You're not welcome in our desert. Okay, when it comes to that, right, in theory, everyone's like, oh, it'll be energy. It'll be sustainable for all. Well, guess what, guys? They have been modifying weather patterns for years, since like the 70s and 80s. This this issue here, Hurricane Hillary, that came in, to me, it was was nothing. They made this huge thing. Look, it's climate change. No, that's man-made shit. And Mother Nature was like, "Uh uh-uh, get the hell out of here. No, you're not having this happen. We waited for like a week to see the rain come and hit. I was waiting for a ridiculous monsoon because... God bless it. We need it here. Rain on me, right? Rain on me. Yeah. Anyways, so we have these patterns here, but say you go full solar, right? And you, and you don't have a car or, or if you do, you only have a certain, cause I'm sure there'll be a cap at some point where they make cars. It can only travel because you only need it to travel 15 minutes. So your battery will only be like a 15 minute battery. And then what happens? They cloud seed over those cities. What does that do? It blocks the UV rays. It blocks the sunlight that recharges these batteries. What does that do to the city? It kills you. Why? No power, no electricity. You can't house your food. Air conditioning is not going to work. Your car is not going to work. Nothing is going to work. That is the ultimate play. That is checkmate. If you move into these cities, we are now controllable puppets that all they have to do is throw some clouds over us and cancel out our sunshine. Also on top of that, it'll block our vitamin D, right? So our immune system will go down again and it'll release something else, wiping off more and more and more of these populations. Okay, now this this next piece, this is gonna go like Alex Jones, Joe Rogan, like conspiracy theory, but I'm, I'm a huge firm believer that things happen in movies to precede what's gonna happen in real life. And I think it hasn't been more apparent than the past couple of years with like white noise and some of these other movies. You're like, oh my God. I believe it was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I don't remember what movie it was. It was one of the newer ones that came out and Shredder, I believe it was, was trying to put a gas and he was going to hook it up to the top of this building and he was going to release this red or pink gas out over the city and when it was doing it i'm like oh god dang it i turned to my wife i'm like that's gonna happen 
right? Because if you have these 15 minute cities, you got these little cities that again, everything's in a 15 minute radius, you could disperse this gas and release viruses or contagions that will wipe out certain populations, which will also create more consumers for medicine for vaccinations. Because if we keep thinking that we need the government, we are going to continue to be consumers. Okay, so all of that aside, I've spent 30 minutes talking about doom and gloom. What do we do? We need to work on protecting ourselves. We've had multiple years of practice to get after our own health, mental health, physical health, social, spiritual health, because Lord knows we need our, our spiritual health more than ever. Right? You can jump on Instagram and you find people talking about the rapture. <laughs> like every three swipes, you're getting something, you're getting something about the end of the world coming, God coming, Jesus coming, whatever it is, right? But we need to have this faith. We need to know that somebody out there is taking care of us and it's not the government. It's not man. We have to believe in God and we have to believe in source and power. And we have to take that upon our responsibility to take care of ourselves and take care of our family. So step number one, realization. We need to realize that we are in control of all of these things. We are in control of our mental health. We are in control of our physical, social, spiritual health. And if we constantly live in a state of fear, all of that gets removed from us. It takes us out of faith and takes us into disbelief. It's easy to slip into disbelief, especially with the tone of everything that's happening. There's some scary crap happening, and I'm not trying to negate the fact that things are scary right now. They are. But I believe that God's going to save us. He's going to pull us through this. There may be a little bit of a reset there, but life will continue to get better and better as we get through these dark times. Dark times build strong men, build strong people, build strong relationships. We have to be aware of that. So step one, realization, realize what's actually going on. Step two, realize that no one's going to save us from ourselves. Okay, God can do it, but we have to save ourselves from our, our constant giving of empowerment to somebody else, to a higher power in terms of the government. They're not going to help us. The more the government says, don't worry, the government's here, will help you. The more you should have red flags and alarms go off, unlike the alarm system in Maui, when the fires took place, you should have actual alarms that go off in the body. You're like, oh my gosh, this isn't a good thing. What do I need to learn? What do I need to know about this current state, this current situation? What else do you need to do? I already talked about it. Try to get, try. I know everyone's strapped right now for land and things like that. And if you can get land, fantastic. Get some. Could be an acre, could be two, could be 50 acres. And you can divvy that up with people that you love and respect and start working on kind of figuring out how to live off grid. Okay. And talk solar power. That is one way if you want to try that, but also have like backup generator, have other form of way. If you can do hydroelectric, fantastic. That'll, that'll set you up unless they damn your water. But at the end of the day, it'll at least get you set up. You'll have three different ways to get power to you. If you're like, Hey, I'm stuck in this home that I have. Well, if you have, I have a small, we have a small backyard back there get a garden going. Okay. I managed to grow a garden in Arizona on the first try. Now, not all the crops came through and this drought killed mint plants. And I don't know if you guys are, have green thumbs out there, but mint is like the, one of the most resilient kind of weed type uh, herbs that you can have. And it's just, it's like brittle. <laughs> it's just brittle dead grass more or less in my little planters there. But you can learn how to grow and how to till your own land and your own soil, collect your own seeds and figure out what foods you and your family eat and what foods you guys can grow. Okay. If you have neighbors, talk to your neighbors, say, Hey, I'm going to do tomatoes over here. I'm going to do zucchini, some squash. I'll do like the fall foods, maybe some pumpkin in there as well. Can you do peppers? So we'll go jalapeno peppers or I don't know, cayenne or some bell peppers. We do some of those. So like you start to get that, you get some fruit trees or something going if you get some fruit and you start to live off your land again because you can predict what's actually going into the soil because you manage what's in the soil. So you start harvesting your own stuff that makes you less reliant on the government and makes you less reliant on the grocery stores. The other thing is I doubt most people listening have farms, but if you do, you can kill your own animals and, and process your own food, your own meat. So if you have something like that, look to be able to offer more, raise more cattle for people around you and just charge people for having quarter cow, half cow, full cow, et cetera, so that they can get some healthy grass-fed meat. If you don't have access to a farm, 
try to find out if there is a, a, a food delivery service where they can freeze dry some some meats or flash freeze some meats and send them your way so that you can stockpile, get a, a chest freezer of some sort or get some Yetis or something that can help to store it just in case the power goes out. And that way you can have some more food, okay? From an herbal standpoint, start learning how to grow herbs. So things like thyme, lavender, or, or stock up on bulk herbs, skullcap, California poppy, a lot of these stress releasing herbs, you want to start learning how to do that. And going into herbalism, there's plenty of books online. You can learn how to grow herbs. There's plenty of herb spots as well, like where you can grow seeds. Uh, they'll sell them to you or they'll sell you plants. Start doing these things because again, the more reliant you are on yourself, number one, it's going to be more time spent outdoors, which means you're going to have more vitamin D. You're going to have more peace. You're going to have more longevity. Gardening is one of the most relaxing things you can do. It gets you outside, especially first thing in the morning. I love to go outside and water my garden. Even though I have a sprinkler system set up, I like to just go out there and water it. It's peaceful. I get the, the sunlight comes up over the mountains. I'm able to take that in. It helps get me for my next night's sleep. Okay, so doing these things can be massively beneficial for you. What else? Get some filtration systems either on your house or if you get a Berkey water filter, do that because you want to make sure your water is clean coming into the house, not just from what you drink, but if you have kids and you're bathing them in a bathtub, you want to try to have a filtration system on the home. Some people go reverse osmosis. Some people just look at some normal ones that you'll see at like Home Depot or Lowe's. Doesn't matter. Try to filter as much stuff out as humanly possible so that way you can have the best setup possible. Or if you want to go cheap, get like a, a water softer, Jolie filter type thing, uh, the shower head, and just shower the water down, fill up the bathtub, and you know it's being filtered. So it's cheap. So becoming more sufficient or more self sufficient that way is going to be big. All right. So what I'm going to go into is like things to, to stop. Doing so, we talked about some things to do, things to stop doing. Number one, stop watching the news. It's okay to be able to be be in the know, but really being in the know just makes you more stressed out. So, take as much news in that you can tolerate without becoming irritable or feeling like there's a sense of like, oh my gosh, right? Like, watch the news as you know it is. It's a brainwashing of stress. All these news outlets, local news channels are saying the same exact thing on repeat. It's all designed to brainwash us. Number two, stop over consuming social media. So even again, there's like, because I get overwhelmed in this too. I've, I've talked about them, Elliot and Johnny, they're two of my best bros. Like send me some stuff and look, like, oh, this is hilarious. And they hit me with like the political stuff. I'm like, ah, I get mad, right? And then I get in this, this funk for like an hour or two, I'm like good grief. So watch, watch how well you consume it, but also make sure you consume it in a way that you know it's outside of you and not within you. Don't let it in. Watch it with a buffer or a filter with knowledge, knowing, hey, it's good to know, but this has nothing to do with me. It's crazy, but it's true. The other thing too, don't support horrible people. Don't support horrible influencers. Don't support horrible businesses. Target, for example, for doing, um, making everyone uncomfortable when trying to buy a swimsuit for your daughter because they have things to be able to tuck your balls and your, your junk in, which is freaking disgusting. Don't support things like that. Don't support um, musicians and artists who are basically for the agenda, these satanic people, Sam Smith's, you know, those types of people are just absolutely outrageous. Doja Cat, like these people are talking about literally selling their soul to the devil, whether they're serious or not, that's not information that you really want to have in your head and don't listen to them. Don't support their music because the way that they're going to get hurt is the, the, the stopping of the consumption. That's why Oliver Anthony or Anthony Oliver went ballistic on social media and on TikTok and the iTunes charts is because he's just a, He's a normal dude. They talk about normal stuff and they can't control him. That drives him crazy, right? So I'm proud of him, by the way. Other things you could do too. Take care of your immune system. Take care of your body. So start preparing yourself. Work on reducing stress. Stress is one of the top ways to deplete your immune system. So work on building it back up. Do meditation, prayer practice, breath work, Wim Hof, things like that. Nasal breathing, binaural beats is another thing that works really great to try to help you to come down into that calm or calmer state and try to do that every single day. If you feel yourself getting taken away with it, calm yourself back down, bring yourself back into the body and have a spouse that you can openly communicate with. I am so blessed, so blessed to have my wife because of how emotionally intelligent she is, where we'll go through some shit. Sorry, sorry, parents, if you're with your kids, we'll go, we'll go through some stuff. And I know that I can tell her about it and she supports me she lifts me up and and it's amazing to be able to have that and if you feel like you can't have that with your spouse just start opening that conversation up and say hey i've never done this before especially men 
we don't know how to communicate half the time. So like, I don't have no idea what I'm saying, but I'm just going to tell you how I feel. I feel overtired, overworked, overstressed. I can't sleep. And I feel like the weight of the world is on my shoulders. And whether the wife can help you out or the spouse can help you out or not, that's fine. But at least you're helping to say, Hey, you know, I may be a little bit shorter now. And I want you to know, it doesn't have anything to do with you. I'm just really overwhelmed at work right now. And I need to do better at not absorbing the news. I need to be better at making sure that I make better health decisions for myself. And I know that I kind of let myself go, but you know, I would love if you would help to just hold me accountable with love and support to help me get there, right? It's just a beautiful way to communicate, okay? Open up that dialogue. What else can you do? Obviously, you knew I was going to tell you to get tested here and not COVID test, but I'm talking about getting regular tested. So do some functional diagnostic tests, whether it's inflammatory markers, CRP. So let's just go through some markers that are actually great. So if you're going to get like blood work done, you could always reach out to the office. We could tell you what blood work to do. Or if you have like an any lab test now or something, you can, you can usually find some inflammatory panels. But what you would want to do is basically get like a, a CRP, so C-reactive protein. You'd want to see what your cholesterol is looking like. And you want like an in-depth cholesterol panel, not just LDL, HDL, total cholesterol and triglycerides. You want some VLDLs and some of these LP little A's. You want to know what's actually going on there. You want to see your insulin. You want to see your leptin. You want to see hemoglobin A1C, blood glucose. You want to do a CBC and a CMP. All right, those are just two basic panels that you can get for super cheap. And then a hormone panel is also really good to get as well. For men, make sure you get that testosterone in there. You can do a serum testosterone, free testosterone. Make sure it has sex hormone binding globulin or SHBG. I always get those two SHBG tested because that'll allow you to know how your body is functioning. Get your estradiol in there too. But in terms of like the inflammatory markers, CRP and homocysteine are going to be two of the top important ones that you want to check out there. What that'll do is let you know, those are symptom tests. So it's going to let you know, hey, something is going on and we, you may need to dig a little bit deeper. And that's where these other tests come into play, right? Too many people try to get diagnosed just based off of that, but it always, requi <laughs> it always requires further testing. I am just an energy ball today. Whew, good thing I have massage in an hour. <laughs> but anyways, so you want to make sure that you're doing stuff to be able to protect your body and go more into the functional test. That's where I was going. So the functional test, what do you do? What, what, do I, what am I even talking about? So I'd want you to get a GI map, so stool test, okay? and do an adrenal and hormone analysis. So if you've already done blood hormones, it would still be beneficial to do a Dutch plus to get the full metabolites and the extra estrogens, things like that. But if you're like, ah, I'm tight on money, do blood, blood hormones are always gonna be cheaper. And then do a salivary adrenal analysis. So an adrenal car through Genova uh, or some other panel like that, but you wanna analyze your adrenals through saliva. That adrenal response and GI test is going to be two of the most important things that you can actually look at and assess for how healthy you currently are. Pretty much any disease under the sun is going to start and stem from what's going on in those organ systems. Your diet, lifestyle, relationships, faith, etc. are going to impact what's going to show up on those tests. So you help to eliminate those things from the body while working on the diet, lifestyle, faith, etc. And then you basically get this full package of who you, you're, who you were called to be. Okay. So start doing those things. If you're like, what are those tests? Just go into my lab shop and you, you'll be able to see it. You'll be able to order it. You don't have to meet with me if you don't want to, but use me, take advantage of me, <laughs> take advantage of my tests there. Go for it. Supplements and things that you should be using. All right. So if everyone's like, oh my gosh, COVID's coming. First off, don't let your kid go to school with a mask on. It's bullshit. It doesn't work. It's never been tested to work. It's all been a bunch of lies and they've never proved that it stops the transmission of COVID at all. It just suffocates your kid and causes issues psychologically, as well as difficulties with learning and decrease in oxygen. So it causes a hypoxic state or inflamed kid means a more sick kid. And the other thing is, this is funny. I'm just going to throw it out there. If you see a kiddo with a bandaid on the shoulder, avoid them like the plague. Avoid them like the plague. Why? Right? Why? Because they just got injected and if they had any sort of virus in there, whether it was COVID shot or any type of live attenuated virus in there, it's going to shed for about two weeks after the injection. So if the band-aid's on, it's probably going to be a couple of days or so. So they're shedding all of those viruses. They're going to get everybody in school sick, right? That's why, that's why kids get sick when they go back to school is you're mixing all this bullshit into the school system and you're like, enjoy and so you'll have our healthy kids. They're just like, yeah, it's fine. We're good, right? They may have like a cough for a second, and then they just process through it. Right? <laughs> it's pretty amazing. So work on that. 
The other thing is you can do too for, for adults as well as kiddos, get some vitamin D, some vitamin C in there, some zinc. A multivitamin is always imperative for you to do. Some fish oils and some magnesium. So if you wanted to know like, hey, product recommendations, there's a twice daily multi-pack that will have the multivitamins, fish oil, and magnesium in it with some zinc in there too. Vitamin D, you could do D avail 10K, so 10,000 IUs of vitamin D. I always suggest that through quote unquote cold season. Vitamin C, if it's a kid, you could do C plus biophys. In adults, you could do that too. It's delicious and kids love it. The other thing you want to do is make sure you're getting enough fiber in in the diet as well. So recommendations is about 30, 30 grams of fiber a day. That'll help to bind toxins, will bind excess estrogens. and It'll also help to keep the bowels moving. Just remember to drink plenty of water as you're doing that as well. Uh, Another thing you can do if you're like, I'm constantly stressed with all the stuff that's going on, then get yourself some catecholicom. It's a combo product. It's It's an adrenal adaptogen that helps to calm the stress down for you. If you want to go traditional Chinese herbs, California poppy is fantastic. Kava kava root is also fantastic as well. And if it's before sleep, you can do like skull cap. It's one of those things that's designed to kind of calm down the mind. I have a bag of it in the, my medicinal pantry, a, a bag of skull cap. I just make some tea with that, some California poppy and some other herbs and things. And it's beautiful. The other thing you can do for like the herbal standpoint is some elderberry. So get some elderberry, um, whether it's syrups, um, one of our friends actually has like these kits that you can get with the elderberries in it and you just put it in there add some water i believe it is and you mix it up and you make your own syrup you could do something like that because kids benefit from that tremendously uh, just as well as adults do too the other thing here too so i talked about getting growing your own herbs or get bulk herbs so where i get bulk herbs from like dry herbs is mountain rose herbs i believe it's just called bulk herb store just type in bulk or herbs. You want to get organic. You don't want just the traditional stuff. You have to get organic here because these are medicinal. These are things that are going to be used to help you. You don't want any contaminants being in that soil or in that that root or in that flower because it's going to throw off the chemical properties of that particular herb. So you won't get you won't get everything for your buck. So yes, it is important to get the organic stuff. Pay a little bit more, but you'll love it. Okay, get massages if you can. Right. So if you can, whether you're like, hey, I'm broke and I can't afford that, that's okay. Have your wife or have your husband get, just rub each other's shoulders or just buy like a little massager thing that you just put on your neck and just help you to, to try to relax. The other things you could do too are castor oil packs. Love putting it on my liver just to protect the liver. Just basically lather on some castor oil that have this like this little, it's definitely a female belt. <laughs> Put it around there, look like I'm wearing a waist trainer, and it helps to hold castor oil on on the ribs. It will help to detox or pull out any toxins from the liver. You can put it on the spleen too. You can put it anywhere you want on the body. You can find them on Amazon. I think I actually have them on my Amazon store as well. If I don't, I'll try to upload the one that I have. And you could also do liver and gallbladder flushes. So you could do these flushes if you have any questions on there. Like, I don't know what to do. I know I do have the liver and gallbladder flush, the kits and everything on my Amazon store. If you want how I recommend you do it through the Andreas Mortz protocol, just shoot me an email and I'll have my assistant uh, shoot over the protocol for you so you can follow it. Super easy to do. And again, I'm trying to do things that are easy and affordable for you so you don't have to just worry about testing all the time because that's just going to cause more stress if you can't afford it, right? The other thing too is stop putting toxic food in your body, right? Because we are what we eat, okay? And there's so many varieties that we are what we eat. Eight, we are what we digest from what we ate. The, the short and sweet of it is we are what we eat. So if we eat inflammatory, horrible food, then we are going to be inflammatory, horrible human beings. We're going to be more stressed out. We're going to be having more brain fog. We're going to have more internal infections. We're going to have more yeast, more candida, more bacterial overgrowth, and more misery in our life. And if we want to have the best chance possible, we could do all those things that I mentioned, all those immune supporters. We can meditate. We can get massages, et cetera. But if we still keep eating a toxic diet, we will always be a toxic person. So stop Oh, actually, I don't think if you're, if it fits your macros is kind of a thing anymore, which is kind of cool. But if you're still doing the if it fits your macros thing, I guess Weight Watchers is probably doing it where you're just stuffing cake down your face and you're like, oh, this will do because it's only 200 points or whatever Weight Watchers says. Don't do that because it's not created equally. Calories are not created equally. Give yourself good stuff, good strong food so your body will be strong on the other end of this as well. Okay. I know this seems like a lot. And I know I spent the first 30 minutes with doom and gloom, but I I need to draw awareness to this because we are entering in this time in our life where we have to become more and more personal responsible, personally responsible for ourselves and for our family, right? The education system is failing us. The government is failing us. Medicine is failing us. So what do we do? 
we find ways that we can take care of ourselves. And I am just absolutely devoted to taking care of as many people as humanly possible. I'm trying to do so much financial gymnastics to make sure the care and things are affordable for the people who are coming across my my threshold, if you will, my, my virtual threshold, because this this just has to happen. And and we're talking about, I'm, I talk about the long game. I had a, a conversation with two patients yesterday about this, with talking about the long game, where it's like, listen, like we're doing this for ourselves, for sure. We, we don't want you to be miserable. We don't want you to sacrifice yourself through life. But what I want you to do is is learn how to be healthy, teach that to your kids. Those kids will teach it to the grandkids, which teach it to the great grandkids. And so we'll have this trickle down effect of, of health and what true health actually is. And my goal is in a few generations for all of us to understand that we can live, we should live, and we will flourish living off the land, living off what God gave us. God gave these us these beautiful herbs, these tinctures that I have right above me. He gave these to us. These are our medicines. These are things that have this bioenergetic energy about us that our body is designed to take in. And God strategically planted them in locations where you would need them. And I keep going back to skull cap because it's so freaking amazing is that this stuff grows by loud water or waterfalls or loud environments. And why? What does skull cap do? It calms the noise. Right. So if you're there and you see it and you pick that herb, and you know what the herb is and you make a little tea out of it, you steep it, you drink it, you can go to sleep and have a great night's sleep. How amazing is that? It should spark curiosity. You're like, oh, great. Like what else is around here? Right. Like in Pittsburgh, dandelions were ridiculous this year. I know that they were because my dad was telling me about it. They were everywhere. And people are like dandelions are weeds. Well, in reality, it's like, no, is that the innate intelligence of the earth saying, hey, we need more dandelions because we're more toxic than ever. And dandelion is one of the best things to help cleanse and detox the body and detox the liver. And you do dandelion root, dandelion tea, dandelion blends, right? It's right in front of us. If we'll just put down the phone, and put down the news, and we just look at what God gave us. So I challenge you, this is just curious. With If you have kids or if you're just bored on a weekend, look around and figure out what you have just in your, in your proximity, what plants do you have that are naturally growing? These wildflowers that are naturally growing, what are they? Type in whatever the species is, California poppy, medicinal properties, and see what it says. You'll be blown away by what you'll see. I mean, these things have been on this earth for many, many, many years. And yes, they're beautiful, but they're put here for a purpose. So what is the purpose for you? So hopefully at the end of this, I, I built you all back up. I have every intention that this is going to get pulled as soon as it goes to YouTube. So, so I don't, I, I'm not going to filter myself anymore. Instagram is probably going to hate me for this too. I, I don't care at this point because this information needs to be talked about and I'm no longer going to allow the, the government or whatever to try to censor me and the truth of what's actually going on around here. So I love you all from the, from the deepest, 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 deepest depths of my heart and my soul. Anyone who is listening to this, anyone who has been working with me, you know, you, you were put and I, you were put in my, in my path for a reason. And I was put in your path for a reason. I don't think anything is, is coincidental. I think is everything is, is exactly how it was supposed to be. And it was our choice to, to take action on it. And if we didn't take action and talking and communicating with each other right now, then maybe five, 10 years from now, while I'm still doing this stuff, our paths would cross again, right? And it's all about planting the seed. It's planting the seed of knowledge. And my goal is to make as many people on this earth as, as healthy as humanly possible by empowering you back to roots, to basics, to ancient traditions, to, to herbalism and, and things that you can do on your own. And my patients will tell you too, like I get fired up about this stuff in like a loving, passionate way. I have, I have this beautiful family that just, they just moved and they kind of got their own little homestead there. And uh, her husband is such a handy man. He reminds me of my best friend, Jeremiah, back home. Like, he's such a great dude, and he's willing to give the shirt off his back. He's a phenomenal human being. And we were on the phone, and she's like, oh, yeah, I'm just sitting on the front porch in a swing, and we have a pond on the property, and he's fishing with my two-year-old, and then they come back, and like, oh, we caught a bunch of fish. And it's like this simplicity of life that we're told that we shouldn't want, but it is so fulfilling when we get it. Right. And so I'm like, well, you could build a little garden there. Like, she's like, I don't know if I want to do this stuff. I don't know if I don't want to. I'm like, well, you sound like you do. So it's like, you know, build, build these little gardens up 
and then teach your your fellow you know neighbor or or people or friends family what these herbs do have your kids help and tend you you know tend to the plants with you and teach them the medicinal properties and the power of them etc and the, hey god gave us these things and this is what they do because it's going to blow everyone's mind right this is the stuff this is why i was put here there's so many things that god is calling me to do in this world that i'm excited to step from it and the scary part is that people will try to throw you throw you off I'm getting attacked constantly. It's not on just social media and stuff. There's a, a man out there that is just one of the most miserable human beings in the world. And I pray for him, man. I, I, I try to send love and, and forgiveness his way because, you know, he's lost, he's broken. And, and I think he knows it. I think he's aware of it. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to let him dictate my purpose for the future. God will always take care of me. God will always provide right? And he always will. And so that, that's where we keep our faith. And so we, if we can pull our faith out of social media and out of fear and out of lack and out of poverty, we put it towards abundance, then abundance will come to us. We will attract abundance because we will be happy. We will be grateful. We will have everything that we could ever possibly want and imagine and not what social media is telling us that we want or need. So that being said, again, I love you guys. Thank you so much for the support and following along this whole journey over a hundred episodes on this podcast and, and the amount of people that are, that are hearing this and downloading this, I am so eternally grateful for you. And I, and I cannot wait to give you more and more and more information because there is a cocooning phase that is happening right now. And there is, there's a lot, there's a lot on the docket and I am so pumped to, to release this to you guys. So again, thank you all. I'm going to tune out here and uh, yeah, thanks again for tuning in. Keep yourself extraordinarily healthy.